hello dear student assalamu alaikum hoping you are fine and you have enjoyed the previous lecture today before beginning our next lecture let's have a review of the previous lecture let's see and let's understand what we have learnt in our previous lecture in our previous lecture we discuss about the word international and we discussed the person who used the word international for the first time and his name was Jeremy Bentham he used the word in the year 1789 and then we also discussed some of the other events that occurred in the year 1789 can you recall that event yes one was French Revolution and the second was the first US Constitution that was enforced for the first time and with that the first US president whose name was yes George Washington yes and he took oath as the first president of United States of America after that we discussed the meaning of international relations and we discussed that international relation is concerned with the relation between states relation between between nations and then there are two views about international relations one was the narrow view and the second was a broader view what was the narrow view about the narrow view take very restricted view of international relations and restrict or limit international relations to political activities the official relations between states and the broad view basically extend the view of international relations to many interactions many relations the relations between different types of organizations the relation between peoples the relations between different agencies even the study of international law and finally we discussed that even the internal affair of a state falls within the jurisdiction of international relations after that which view is acceptable at present which of the view is applicable at present so the view is basically the broad view because international relations is not narrow it has assumed a very broader view काफी डिसिप्लिन्स में और काफी एरियास में पहल गई हैं इसलिए इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस को स्टडी करते वक्त वी विल ऑलवेज टेक द ब्रॉडर व्यू दिस वाज द रिवीजन ऑफ द प्रीवियस लेक्चर लेट्स मूव टू अवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर लेक्चर नंबर टू इन टुडे इस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस इंटरनेशनल रिलेश then we will discuss the scope of IR then the importance or significance of IR as a discipline again we will end up with a summary and some review questions hope this will understandable if I ask you a question that is there any difference between international relations and international politics so what will be your answer are they the same or are they different zahri baat hai aapka answer hoga ki ye different hai because they are two different words one is called international relations and the second is called international politics if i again give you a food for thought ke dono mein kya relation hai ji international politics or international relations kyunki in the field of international relations bohut se thinkers ka ye khayal hai ye khayal hua karta tha ki international politics or international relations dono same hai halanki dono same nahi hai aur waqt ke sath sath jo tabdiliyan aati gayi to usne sabit kiya ki there is a difference between international relations and international politics the difference is just like if we have the narrow view and the broad view of international relations. Aap dubara 
इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन के दोनों व्यूज को रिपीट करें दोनों को दोबारा दोहराएं नैरो व्यू एंड द ब्रॉड व्यू अगर मैं इसको ऐसे ले लू कि जो नैरो व्यू है इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन का सो दिस विल बी वेरी क्लोज टू इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स एंड द ब्रॉड व्यू बिलोंग्स टू इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन बिकॉज द नैरो व्यू वॉज वेरी नैरो इट वॉज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ओनली पोलिटिकल एक्टिविटीज इट वॉज ओनली रिलेटेड टू ऑफिशियल एक्टिविटीज वाइल द इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन ब्रॉड व्यू इज एक्सटेंडिंग टू मैनी स्पेयर्स टू मैनी डोमेन्स ऑफ लाइफ टू मैनी डोमेन्स ऑफ इंटरनेशनल इवेंट्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट फॉर सिंप्लिसिटी आई वुड अगेन गो and define international politics and recall the narrow view of international relations to remember jis tarah international relations ka narrow view limited hai isi tarah international politics be limited hai kyunki iska taluq narrow view se hai aur international relation broad hai uska daire ikhtiyar wasi hai so if we are going to define international politics so it will be defined as the way in which sovereign states interact with each other on political level it's basically the interaction on the political level siyasi taur pe jo interactions hoti hain state ke beech mein that's basically called international politics can you see that this political interaction is basically to achieve power kyunki according to realist realist ek school of thought hai international relations mein jinka ye khayal hai ki jitni bhi riyasate hain they try to get power their ultimate objective is to get power jitne bhi mumalik hain aur jo states hain aur jo governments hain to realist ki theory yahi hai रियलिज्म यही है और हकीकत यही है कि ये जो स्टेट्स हैं ये पावर के लिए कोशिश करती हैं इनको पावर पसंद है रिमेंबर पावर पावर इज अ लग्जरी पावर पावर इज अ जॉय पावर गेट्स यू मैनी थिंग्स एंड दे फॉर द स्टेट्स ट्राई टू अचीव पावर एंड इफ दे ट्राई टू अचीव पावर सो दिस वुड बी बेसिकली कॉल इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स and for this international politics the states interact with one another on political level which is again the narrow view of international relations so international politics is very limited it is concerned only with the official relations the relations between states on political level the purpose of this relation is to get uh, solve their conflicts and to achieve power that's how ip international politics is concerned with political activities involving politics state interest and conflicts so it relates with these kind of affairs the ultimate objective is again to achieve power aap politics karte hain aap siyasat karte hain kis liye ek objective ko hasil karne ke liye to जो स्टेट अपना ऑब्जेक्टिव हासिल करेगा दैट्स बेसिकली वुड बी कमिंग अंडर द इंटरनेशनल पॉलिटिक्स बिकॉज इट हैज एन इंटरेस्ट एंड इट इज ट्राइविंग फॉर दैट इंटरेस्ट ऑन पॉलिटिकल लेवल विदाउट इन्वॉल्विंग अदर ग्रुप्स अकॉर्डिंग टू मॉर्गिंतो मॉर्गिंतो इज अ वेरी नोटेबल एंड वेरी फेमस थिंकर एंड राइटर इन इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन and his views are very respectable and his expressions are really very witty they are really full of expressions and full of stress and they they meet a lot according to morgento international politics is the struggle for and the use of power involving nations involving states so again international politics is concerned with with the use of power and struggle for power that's what a state basically do in the picture you can see uh, morgento morgento was a born german 
and before World War II, he left for United States because of the disturbance in Germany. And then he worked throughout in United States and he served at very key positions. His famous book is called Politics Among Nations. Please try to remember the, the masterpieces, try to also know about the important books in the international relations and their authors. It is important. So his famous book is called Politics Among Nations. As compared to international politics, international relation is broader. It includes a wide variety of activities, a wide variety of political and even non-political. It includes official as well as unofficial. It includes formal and informal activities and relations, relations between different diverse groups, different organizations. In the picture, you can see uh, what is international politics. The objective is to control the globe, to control the world. And that's basically the international politics aims at. It tries to, to fully control all the states and to achieve and to struggle for power. In the next, you can see three images. Again, you can see the, the power politics, the struggle for power, and uh, in that picture, you can see three dominant powers in the world. The cross represent Christianity or the Christian world. And the star, basically the six corner star, represent Jewish. Yehudi lobby ko represent karti hai. Or jo sitara or hilal hai, the crescent and the star, they represent the Muslim forces. And there is a struggle to achieve and to dominate their group. Although the Muslims would not be very much dominant because their objective is different, but still polit power politics or international politics is to get yourself prominent and to influence the other groups. The scope of IR. Let's see what do we mean by scope. According to Oxford Dictionary, the extent of the area or subject matter that something deals with or to which it is relevant. Scope se mirad, ek jo discipline hai, uske daare akhtiyar mein koon koon se chizhi aati hai, uske daare akhtiyar mein koon se mazameen aate hai, koon se domains aate hai, kahan kahan pe aap usko apply kar sakte hai. So all these areas, all these domains in which you can apply international relations and those areas are also relevant, so they would be called a scope. In the scope, if we begin, the scope of international relations has again a very gradual growth. Shuru shuru mein iska scope bahut narrow tha. Ye hum definition mein bhi pad chuke hai, ki first of all it was dealing with the official relations. It was related to diplomatic activities and then the scope was widening. Let's see how the scope widened with the passage of time. The scope of IR started with diplomatic history. Again, the same as you know we discussed in international relations definition. Earlier, it include the activities of the diplomats and the negotiations and the talk, basically the relations at political level, the relations at governmental level. So only this much part was included in the scope of international relations. And international relation was not interested in other type of activities. So this was in the beginning. Then, uh, before I go to the next point, again you can see an image in which you can see the diplomatic relations between the officials 
and you can see the ambassadors and the diplomats negotiating that was basically the initial scope of international relations then the study of international law also become a part of international relations and in studying international relations we also keep on considering international law which means international law also became a part and was included in the scope of international relations why this was so because as there grew conflicts in the world and with the conflicts also came different types of pacts different type of treaties jaise tension badhti jati hai to uske baad uska solution bhi nikalta hai aur solution ke nateeje mein muayade janam lete hain therefore ye jo muayade janam lete hain aur different types ke agreements hote hain to phir inko follow karne ke liye bhi kuch principles hote hain jo ki phir baad mein international law ban jate hain so these pacts and treaties then included in the international relations and also form of international law widened the scope of international relations then the study of international organization was also included why it was included can you think why it was included because international organizations deal with different states and if it deals with different states it is coming under the domain of international relations kyunki international relations ka taluk hi state se hai to agar international organizations hain jo ki mukhtalif aur variety of countries mein wo kaam karenge to iska lazmi matlab hai ki this would be included in international relations there is an example of uh, an organization which is called league of nation maybe you have heard the name of league of nation it is similar to united nations because even the name is similar to united nations and it was an international organization can i ask you in which year this foundation or this organization may have been established i will give you a clue when was united nation founded united nation was founded yes after world war 2 and this organization was before united nation so what could be the possibility of its establishment on the same principle it should be after world war 1 kyunki dusri jang e azim ke baad agar un ban rahi hai to ye jo organization hai ye usse pehle hai so this means it was after world war world war 1 pehle jang e azim ke baad bani hogi ya aur kal humne discuss kiya tha ki pehle jang e azim kaun se saal mein shuru hui it started in 1914 good and when did the first world war ended we discussed it yesterday the first world war was stretched to 4 years therefore the first world war ended in 1918 to ye organization uske baad bani hogi iska mumkin hai ye kaun sa ho sakta hai aap kareeb bhi ho sakte hain it it is not 1918 it is 1919 it take some time to be established so league of nation was established in the year 1919 after world war 1 and the objective of this organization was to prevent the world from a future war and to establish peace in the world just like the objective of united nation you can see the logo of league of nation it was the symbol representing league of nation that was founded in 1919 to establish and maintain world peace can you name some other organizations 
some other international organizations or even regional organizations. I know you know a lot. So let's start. Yes, there is UN, there is OIC, there is Arab League, yes, there is SARC, there is UNESCO, there is IMF, there is so many. And you can see the name of some others as well. You can also see the symbol of United Nations. That is a world organization and it is striving hard for maintaining world peace. So, as the scope of IR is now widening, it started with diplomatic history, then the study of international law was also included with the emergence of international organizations, the study of international organization was also included because they were dealing with the states, they were dealing with, with so many countries. And then, post World War II, great changes started coming in the world. Post World War II, what is it? When the post is post-covered, it means after. So this means, after World War II, दूसरे जंगे अजीम के बाद दुनिया में बहुत तेजी से तब्दीलियां आनी शुरू हुई. There were so many changes that started happening in the world. I would like to ask you again, what are those events? What are those changes that occurred after World War II? Please think. I will be giving you a clue. एक का ताल्लुक हमसे है इससे भी आसान उसका ताल्लुक हमारे मुल्क से है यस यू गेट द पॉइंट वी गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस आफ्टर वर्ल्ड वॉर टू इट इज अ ग्रेट चेंज फॉर अस बिकॉज वी बिकेम इंडिपेंडेंट हमारे अलावा और भी कोई आजाद हुआ जी हाँ इंडिया आजाद हुआ पाकिस्तान बना और इसके अलावा बहुत से ममालिक दुनिया में आजाद हैसियत से उभरे सो दे आर मैनी कंट्रीज डेट गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस आफ्टर वर्ल्ड वॉर टू इट वॉज अ ग्रेट चेंज एंड कैन यू सी डेट एज दीज कंट्रीज आर गेटिंग इंडिपेंडेंस द स्कोप ऑफ आई आर इज इंक्रीजिंग इट इज वाइडनिंग बिकॉज नो दीज इंडिपेंडेंट स्टेट्स वुड ऑल्सो इंटरेक्ट विद वन अनदर they would they would have relations with one another and be, because of these so many states establishing relations and dealing so many matters so the scope of international relations would be widening so the events after world war ii again increased and widened the scope of international relations ye to humne ek discuss kiya ke bahut se mamalik आजाद हैसियत से दुनिया के नक्शे पे आए इसके अलावा और कौन से चेंजेस हैं अगेन आई वुड हेल्प यू डेट दीज स्टेट्स डेट गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस जिसमें पाकिस्तान है जिसमें इंडिया है चाइना है मलेशिया है इंडोनेशिया है अफ्रीकन स्टेट्स बहुत ज्यादा हैं तो ये कहाँ से आजाद हुए किन ममालिक से आजाद हुए हाँ उसमें ब्रिटिश भी आता है तो यू हैव ब्रिटिश इसके अलावा और भी काफ़ी स्टेट्स हैं यूरोपियन स्टेट्स हैं क्योंकि बिफोर वर्ल्ड वॉर टू ऑल दिस मोस्ट ऑफ द यूरोपियन स्टेट्स दे वर कंट्रोलिंग एंड दे हैव कॉलोनीज इन डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड मोस्टली द कॉलोनीज वर इन एशिया एंड अफ्रीका ये जो यूरोपियन स्टेट्स हैं जिसमें ब्रिटेन है जिसमें फ्रांस है जिसमें जर्मनी है जिसमें नीदरलैंड है जिसमें पुर्तगाल है जिसको पुर्शगोल भी कहते हैं एंड दी स्टेट्स वर कंट्रोलिंग एंड दे हैव इस्टेब्लिश कॉलोनीज सो इफ द कॉलोनीज आर गेटिंग इंडिपेंडेंस तो इसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि ये जो यूरोपियन कंट्रीज हैं सो देर पावर इज 
decreasing. Their power has basically declined. Unki power mein kami ho rahi hai. Is se liye wo apni colonies ko maintain nahi kar sakte hai. Ye majboor hain ki ye unko azadi dein. To inki power kam ho rahi hai. Again, it was another very drastic change. After World War II, the Europe power was decreasing. And why was it decreasing? My next question. Sorry, I asked too many questions. So let, let's learn. So why the power of Europe was decreasing? Yes, because there was World War II. These European countries were involved in World War II. Jangi Azim, Europe ke wasi laakhe mein ladi gai. And because these European countries were a party to the war, so after fighting that world war, their power weakened. They were destroyed. They were not economically strong to maintain themselves. And therefore they could not control their colonies. This was the destruction of World War II. So, isi ke saath, if we just again have a review of uh, these points, so the changes after World War II is that we have the Europe power being declining, the Europe power being decreasing. And why was it? Because of the World War II. Let's see the destruction of the World War II. You can see cities which are without people, full of destruction, full of destroyed buildings, but no people. We are the people. Here are the people. It's such a pathetic scene. It's such a, such a pitiful. These people are ruthless, ruthlessly killed. They are women. There are children, there are old people, young people, no distinction. Weapons have killed them all. It was the destruction of World War II. You can only see army, you can only see military men. But where is the nation? Where are the people? So if this was the effect of the World War, how could the European states maintain or control their colonies. They have to come back and make their own nation and make their own country. That was the objective. So because of the Europe getting weak, the colonies start getting independence. And we have discussed why they are getting independence. There is another very great change that occurred after World War II and that was the emergence of bipolar world. The emergence of bipolar world. What is that? Bi means two. And poles means pointed edges that you can easily see, that are distinguished. So basically they are two corners which are distinguished. And they are opposite of each other because they are poles. The poles are always opposite to each other. So after World War II, the world saw two poles being formed in the earth. What were those two poles? Yes, they were two major powers. One power was United States, US, and the second power is Again, I would say there was US. And can you make the two alphabets turn around? US, so turn it around, it becomes SU. US ko aap ulta pane, to ban jata hai SU. Ti dusri country hai. One was called United States. Second was called Soviet Union. Jisko USSR bhi kaha karte te hai. So US and SEO and they appeared as the major powers in the world and because they assumed that major powers because they were the victorious states after World War II 
and they were not very much hit by the World War II and they have all the resources to, to, to control. Therefore, these two powers emerged as the superpowers. But these two powers have a very sharp difference. In ke beech mein bohut khatarnaak kisam ka ikhtilaaf tha. Woh ikhtilaaf in ke ideologies different hone ki wajah se tha. So they have different ideologies. And because of their different ideologies, they could not see to each other. Ek dusre ko aankh na baathe tha. So they were against each other. One was US, second was SU. The ideology in US was capitalism. They like private property. And in Soviet Union, it was favoring socialism, which means everything belonged to state. Koi private property nahi hai. Har ek cheez state ke paas hai. Or state ni hi wo loong ko deni hai. To yahan pe mushtar ka property hai. U.S. में individual property है और ये जो दो निजाम ही एक दूसरे के opposite हैं क्योंकि ultimately जो socialism है वो चाहता है कि वो पूरी दुनिया को engulf कर लिया पूरी दुनिया पे पहल जाए और इसी तरह सारी private property खत्म हो जाए जो कि U.S. नहीं चाहता so because of their different ideologies these two states were in a state of war Although not actual war, but there was a cold war. Ek sir chunk. Jis mein wo samne lad to nahi rahe, lekin ek dusre ke khilaaf bohut sara propaganda kar rahe hain. And they are trying to weaken the power of other. And they are fighting secretly against each other. So this boy polar world saw the day after World War II. Before World War II, the world was multipolar. Multipolar se kya hai? Again, multi means many. So this means many powers. From 1648 to 1945, there were many powers. And the powers were basically in Europe. So many European states were powerful. And no one claimed to be the superpower but after World War II, there was two superpowers that emerged from the World War II. Ye jo date hai 1648, kafi important date hai. Aap isko apne zehn mein rakh We will be discussing this very frequently in international relations. You can see the bipolar world in that map. So you have US on one side and you have the Soviet Union bloc on the other side. The countries that support US forms the Western Bloc and the countries that think similar to Soviet Union or they have political system which is similar to Soviet Union they form the Eastern Bloc. So one is the Western Bloc or the capitalistic Bloc and the second is the Eastern Bloc or the Socialist Bloc and these were in a state of constant tension and conflict. Another phenomena that occurred after World War II is armaments and the nuclear proliferation. What are these terms? By armament we mean the race for obtaining arms. Aslaha hasil karne ki jo jistu hai or jo race hai usse armament kahenge so because many states got independence after World War II, they were trying to get weapons. They were trying to get arms. So there were different types of uh, factories being established, not only in the country themselves, but they were also exporting weapons from the other countries. So there was a race from the arms, a race for weapons. So asli hi ki is door mein, dunya mein aslaha ki ambar lagte gaye. Or zahiri baat hai, ye jo phenomena ho raha hai, ye jo international event ho raha hai, iski wajah se IR ka scope change ho raha hai. IR isko bhi deal kar raha hai. Aur wo ye bhi cha raha hai ki jo asla hai, ye zyada na badeya. To wo iske saath deal karne hi koshish kar raha hai. 
international countries are dealing with decreasing that race or slowing down that race and therefore it is resulting in increasing the scope of IR or usse khatarnak nuclear proliferation hai proliferation se murad growth hai jab koi state apni nuclear power ko badhata hai aur nuclear power hasil karne ke liye it established nuclear power plants and it go for nuclear test remember the world would be very dangerous if all the countries start getting nuclear weapons isliye zaruri hai ke jo states hain unko nuclear power hasil karne se bachaya jaye unko roka jaye kyunki nuclear weapons are very deadly bahut khatarnak hai jaan leva hai how to prevent other countries from not getting nuclear weapons and the answer is that you should having international pacts you should have international treaties which emphasize on stopping nuclear growth so this proliferation the nuclear expansion and the effort to stop nuclear expansion further increased the scope of ir you can see the nuclear explosion in one image and uh, in the second image uh, there is a very uh, good thing i like it very much it say drop bombs and carry arms matlab hai ke girana bhi khatarnak aur le jana bhi khatarnak bombs ko giraye aur hathiyar le jaye एक को गिराना खतरनाक है दूसरे को ले जाना खतरनाक है सो इट्स वेरी सरकेस्टिक बहुत ही तंजे जुमला है बट डेट्स द रियलिटी है डेट इज वट इज हैपनिंग इन द वर्ल्ड एंड वी शुड स्टॉप इट द स्टडी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन एम्स टू स्टॉप सच काइंड ऑफ इवेंट्स सो द राइस ऑफ डेमोक्रेटिक गवर्नमेंट्स एंड द राइजिंग एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ पीपल resulted in increasing the scope of ir ab log bachche nahi rahe ab logon ki demands zyada ho gayi hain unko government se zyada facilities chahiye unki needs badh gayi hain wo government se zyada demanding hain aur isliye government unki needs ko pura karne ke liye baaki riyaaton ke sath majboor hai ke taluq rakhe aur wahan se needs ko kisi tarike se pura kar sake so these growing demands of the people and along with it the concept of welfare state ke ek state apni awam ko sari facilities provide kare taki log khushhal zindagi basar kar sake iski wajah se jo zyada interaction ho rahi hai on the international level to ultimately it is resulting in increasing the scope of ir so the scope of ir is continuously increasing as you can see the power of the people and therefore the people demand more and the government has to now talk more to the other states it has to negotiate with other governments on on very diverse level as you can see that now the people say we are not living to work we work to live to lihaza unko aur bhi needs chahiye unko aur bhi facilities chahiye जिसकी वो गवर्नमेंट से डिमांड कर रहे हैं कंक्लूजन कंक्लूजन में वी सॉ डेट द स्कोप ऑफ आई आर हैज वाइड एंड इट हैज ब्रॉड एंड स्कोप काफी वसी हुआ पहले मुख्तर था इट स्टार्टेड विद डिप्लोमेटिक एक्टिविटीज इट स्टार्टेड विद डिप्लोमेटिक अफेयर्स देन द स्टडी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल लॉ वॉज इंक्लूडेड देन विद द ग्रोथ and the establishment of international organizations like league of nations like united nations like nato like warsaw pact ceto santo oic arab league sarc all these and many organizations as they keep on coming they increase the scope of ir and with that international politics because the states were trying to gain power then the scope of ir also included foreign policies and different types of interactions which include economic and financial matters 
geographical, ideological and even military thoughts and strategic studies were included in the scope of IR because the army dealt with other states. The army tries to know about other states and their powers and their army and therefore the states also have to negotiate on that level as well. So is strategic studies ki wajah se bhi IR ka scope bedta raya. Ab, hum dekh rahe hain ki IR ka scope musalsal bedh raha hai. It is growing as a subject. IR is a growing discipline. But still, there are many weaknesses. Wo jo kam weaknesses hain, wo jo kamzoriyan hain is subject mein, wo koon si hain? Number one, it lacks systematic body of organized theories and principles. It ke paas apni nizriyat nahi hain. In ke paas apni principles nahi hain. Kyunki ye abhi ek naya subject hai. Ye abhi abhi iski growth ho rahi hai. Ye abhi bhi seek raha hai. Isi liye iski apni theories nahi hain. Aur isi wajah se iska subject matter ki uniqueness nahi hain. It doesn't have the unity of subject matter. Or ye baki subjects pe zyada inhisar karta hai. Apne theories ko ye nahi bina raha, bilki ye baki subjects se theories le raha hai. Baki subjects se hai play raha hai. Different phenomena ko, different events ko explain karne ke liye, iske paas apni theories nahi hai. Jo bhi international events hote hai. जो भी फेनोमिना हो रहे हैं, उनको अंडरस्टैंड करने के लिए आईआर बाकी सब्जेक्ट से हेल्प लेता है, और उनके थियरीज, प्रिंसिपल्स और लॉस को यूज़ करता है। आखिर वो कौन से सब्जेक्ट्स हैं जिनसे ये हेल्प लेता है? उसमें फिलॉसफी है, लॉ, हिस्ट्री, पॉलिटिकल साइंस, साइकोलॉजी और इस तरह बहुत से सब्जेक्ट्स हैं जिनसे आईआर हेल्प लेता है क्योंकि इसकी अपनी थ्योरीज अभी इतनी ज्यादा डेवलप नहीं हुई हैं ये सीख रहा है ये ग्रो कर रहा है और इसकी थ्योरीज वध के साथ-साथ आते रहेंगे या इसके अलावा आईआर लैक्स ऑब्जेक्टिविटी व्हिच मींस इट हैज अ सब्जेक्टिव नेचर ये एक्यूरेट प्रेडिक्शन नहीं कर सकता ये सही पेशन गोई नहीं कर सकता कि किसी इवेंट का आखिर में क्या असर होगा उसके नतायज क्या होंगे ये नतायज अखस करने में यहाँ पे कोई ऑब्जेक्टिविटी नहीं है वो जो पेशन गोई है जो फोरकास्टिंग है वो गलत भी हो सकती है वो सही भी हो सकती है जिसकी मेन वजह ये है कि आईआर डील्स विद मैन and IR deals with sovereign states. It deals with independent states. Or in ke behavior ko janna bohut difficult hai. Is liye IR sahi tarike se patient goi nahi ker sakta. Even jo IR ke experts hai, jo analyst hai, wo bhi jab koi tajziya karte hai, so they have a difference of opinion. One would be having one view. The second would be having another view. And they would be having a very large difference. And they would come with, with different results and different effects. So this means that the objectivity hasn't been developed in IR. But despite all these weaknesses, in tamam kamzoryun ki bawajud, IR grow to kar rai. So it is a growing subject. And it is growing with its sum of distinctive theories. Apni isne kuch distinctive, kuch alag theories ye apni liye bina raha hai. Agar jana nahi binai, to apni kuch develop kar raha hai. And it has a distinctive subject matter. And therefore may be regarded as a discipline. This discipline that provides a systematic approach for solving problems of international life. And with this, we end up the scope of international relations and we'll move towards our next topic, which is the importance of international relations. Dear students, 
Let's understand the importance of IR as a discipline. IR ki ahmiyat kya hai? The first is IR helps in understanding the present world and the causes of advancement and the backwardness of different states. So IR help us in understanding our world. Ye jo mujooda dunya hai, isko samajhne mein IR hamari help karta hai. Even we also come to know about the past of the world and the historical growth of different states and the historical growth of different events and different phenomena. So IR help us in understanding our present world without the study of IR how would we know and understand other countries and their policies but through IR we come to know about the government policies and the causes of their success or failure. Ek government agar koi policy pe amal karta hai aur usko banata hai to kya wo policy kamyab ho rahi hai ke na kam ho rahi hai IR ke mutalde se hami iska ilm hoga and we would be able to know about it. For example policy like free market policy Kya iske fayde hain ya nuksanat hain? Ek mulk ne agar is policy ko apnaya, to uske kya effect niklea? This would be answered by the study of international relations. Similarly, what is the effect of privatization? What is the effect of nationalization? Are they beneficial? Are they harmful? What about free media? What about education policies? So all these kind of events and policies can be understandable to the study of international relations. And by studying these, we can learn lesson from it. We can, we can judge ourselves and we can apply those which are beneficial for our benefit. Or jahan pe kahin pe nuksan hua ho kisi policy ka to we can avoid it hum usko rok sakte hain ab jis tarah china ki economic policy hai so it's a guiding stone for the world it is a source of back and light for others ye hamare liye mushkil raha hai kyunki china ki economic policy ne china ko ek taakatwar mulk ke saam ki tarah samne le aaye hain and similarly the example of Japan is before us and how the the policies of the Japanese government has made Japan as a technological advanced country. The second, with the study of IR, we understand the problem facing the world and we also then know how to solve them. Because when we study IR, then we are able to find the international problems. Not only our problems, because we can know our problems, but when we study about others, we also know how were those problems emerged in those states, and how we can avoid those kind of problems. And if there were problems in, in that part of the country, how would that country solve that problem? So all these strategies and these solutions can be achieved only through the study of IR. And with this, IR help us in understanding and finding solution through mutual cooperation and combined strategy. Jo international problems hai, jo dunya ke masail hai, iska jana sirf zuri nahi hai, isko kaise solve kiya jaye, aur ek mulk akela solve pe nahi kis sakta, so we need a number of countries to work together for the solution of that problem because some problems are very acute they are very difficult and for solving those problems we need mutual efforts and mutual corporations for example problem like global warming population utilization how to fully utilize your population what kind of planning should be done for it how the strategies should be developed to make your population become an asset and then collective security puri dunya ko amman ki taraf leke jana hai security dilani hai terrorism ko rokna hai 
ऐसे प्रॉब्लम्स के लिए वी नीड म्यूचुअल कॉपरेशन एंड म्यूचुअल एफर्ट्स एंड यू कैन सी हाउ वी कैन अराइव एट दिस म्यूचुअल कॉपरेशन बिकॉज इट विल मेक अवर वर्ल्ड अ बेटर वर्ल्ड एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड दैट अ स्टेट कैन नॉट लिव बाई इट सेल्फ इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर अ स्टेट टू लिव इन आइसोलेशन अ स्टेट हैज टू इस्टेब्लिश रिलेशन विद अदर स्टेट्स इट हैज डिफरेंट नीड्स एंड फॉर फुलफिलिंग इट इट्स डिफरेंट नीड्स इन द टूडेज वर्ल्ड इट हैज टू इस्टेब्लिश रिलेशन विद अदर कंट्रीज एंड वेन यू आर इस्टेब्लिशिंग रिलेशन विद अदर कंट्रीज तो वट आर यू डूइंग you will be cooperating can you see that international study ke mutale se aap international cooperation bhi hasil kar rahe ho because you are establishing relations aur relations agar aap bana rahe ho agar aapke relations kaim ho rahe hain iska matlab hai ki you are cooperating kyunki relations agar kaim ho gaya to wo sirf cooperation se ho gaya agar conflicts ho gaya then relations would be broken so the study of ir helps in seeking international cooperation for a better world it share common concern over global issues and problems and you can see as the world belongs to us and therefore all our hands should be uh, uh, moved towards saving our world we should be helping the world we should join hands without any discrimination you can see different nationalities in the figure having their hands and they are combined they have they are joined and they are mutually struggling to make the world peaceful for example problems like illiteracy problem like nuclear expansion and threat to global peace then there is climatic change energy conservation aaj kal energy kafi duniya mein kam ho rahi hai हमारे एनर्जी के रिसोर्स कम हो रहे हैं सो द स्टडी ऑफ आई आर वुड ऑलवेज ट्राई टू हैव कॉपरेशन एंड अ कम्बाइन स्ट्रेटेजी हाउ टू फाइट अगेंस्ट दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स एंड हाउ टू फाइंड बेटर सोल्यूशंस और बेटर अल्टरनेटिव आई आर की वजह से हम ये प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व कर सकते हैं आई आर ऑल्सो हेल्प इन इनकरेजिंग पीसफुल रिलेशंस remember peace is what we need at the present we cannot afford wars we cannot afford conflicts the people demands facilities the people have diverse needs duniya ki population kafi zyada ho gayi hai humne unki zaruriyat ko pura karna hai hum jang ke mutahamil nahi ho sakte hamare resources kam ho rahe hain हमें चाहिए कि ये जो हमारे रिसोर्स हैं हम इनको पॉजिटिवली यूज़ करें हम इसको ऐसे तरीके से यूज़ करें कि सारी दुनिया में खुशहाली आए देर शुड बी प्रॉस्पेरिटी आ देर शुड बी जॉय एंड देर शुड बी नो कन्फ्लिक्ट द स्टडी ऑफ आई आर हेल्प्स अस इन अवॉइडिंग कन्फ्लिक्ट्स इट हेल्प्स अस इन इस्टेब्लिशिंग पीस बिकॉज वेन वी स्टडी आई आर we learn this lessons that we should avoid conflicts because conflicts leads to tension conflicts leads to destruction jahan pe bhi conflicts honge jahan pe tanazeeat honge humne un tanazeeat ko hal karna hai to ek khaas tarike se hal karna hai we should not go for for different types of confrontation the study of ir helps us in understanding that we should solve our problems and our conflicts through different mechanisms we should not go for propaganda or basically negative propaganda in which one country is criticizing the other country and popularizing a propaganda kisi dusre mulk ke khilaf propaganda karna iske negative asarat honge इसके पॉजिटिव असरात कभी नहीं होंगे अगर हमने दुनिया में अमन कायम करना है तो हमने प्रोपेगेंडा से अपने आप को बचाना है दिस इज वट वी आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन बिकॉज द पास्ट इज बिफोर अस वर्ल्ड वॉर वन 
میں جو ڈیفرنٹ کاؤزز ہیں اس کے جو ڈیفرنٹ وجوہات ہیں اس میں یہ بھی ہے کہ دیر واز نیگیٹیو پروپیگنڈا اگینسٹ ادر سٹیٹس اینڈ دیر ور سیکریٹ ملٹری الائنسز وچ مینس دا سٹیٹس ور ڈوئنگ پیکٹس اینڈ الائنسز ود ادر سٹیٹس اینڈ دوز الائنسز ور سیکریٹ ایک ملک دوسرے ملک کے ساتھ خفیہ معاہدے کر رہا ہے جب کہ اس کے نیبر کو پتہ نہیں ہے اور جب جنگ ہوتی ہے تو یہ نیبر کہہ رہا ہے کہ یہ اکیلا ہوگا لیکن جب جنگ ہوتی ہے دین دا ادر اسٹیٹ آلسو کم ان بٹوین اینڈ دا ریزلٹ از ڈفرنٹ سو دا افیکٹ آف سیکریٹ ملٹری الائنس از ڈیٹ اٹ کریٹس ٹینشن اٹ ریزلٹس ان وار سو وی شوڈ اوائڈ سیکریٹ ملٹری پیکٹس اگر ہم نے فوجی معاہدہ کرنا ہے تو اس کو اوپن ہو اٹ شوڈ بی نون ٹو آل ادرس کہ بھائی ان دونوں ممالک کے بیچ میں اتفاق ہے ان کے بیچ میں اتحاد ہے اینڈ دیر فور دا ادر کنٹری شوڈ ناٹ فائٹ ود دیم سو دا ملٹری الائنس شوڈ بی اوپن اٹ شوڈ بی ریویلڈ اٹ شوڈ ناٹ بی سیکریٹ بیکاز سیکریٹ ملٹری الائنس آر ناٹ فروٹ فل فار دا ورلڈ پیس اینڈ سملرلی دا ریس فار دا آرنامنٹس اسلحے کا حصول دنیا میں امن نہیں لاتا بلکہ یہ دنیا کے امن کے لیے خطرہ ہے سو وی شوڈ اوائڈ ریس فار دا آرمس وی شوڈ اوائڈ ریس فار ویپنس جو پیسہ ہمارا آرمس پہ یوز ہو رہا ہے وی شوڈ ایلوکیٹ دس منی ٹو ادر ریسورسز دیٹس شوڈ بی سروگ دا سروس آف دا پیپل دیٹ شوڈ بی سروگ دا بینیفٹس آف دا پیپل and therefore the spending on the arms should be decreased and this would be achieving the peace remember the study of IR helps us in establishing peaceful relations and not to go for these kind of strategies we learned that if there are conflicts if there are tensions between different states that tension should be solved through peaceful means What are those peaceful means? The peaceful means are diplomacy and negotiations. You should talk. Remember, talk, solve the problems. You should go for diplomacy. You should go for dialogues. Baat cheet hogi, baat cheet se masail ka hal hoga, aur jango se masail ka hal nahi nikalta. And with this, when there is peace between states, then there would be a time when we would be having a global peace we would be having a world peace in that world peace you would be having universal brotherhood all the people would be living happily and there would be no tension and no war the study of IR is helping us in achieving this and we are seeing that the conflicts are most of the time stopped because the people have information the states have information about the international relations and that is proving beneficial to them the next importance of IR is that it ensures and build proper economic relations between international communities because IR deals with with nations and in that nations when you are dealing so there is also trade relations also being discussed economic activities are also considered and this would be resulting in a very uh, uh, good and positive race for 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 eco economy and for the businessman and they would be promoting their business not nationally but also internationally yeah. it helps in promoting effective trade policies between states because the states try to meet the needs of the people they negotiate with other states they talk with other states and they arrive at different kind of peace settlements and with this we have better exchange of good and products better tariffs because the states are involved on the international level they are promoting the the business they are trying to export and import and for this they are negotiating with other governments 
and they are arriving at, at good policies, how to have good tariffs, how to have good currency exchange, how to have good products and um, the different rates on which they can be um, done. The next importance of IR is that it helps us in understanding and promoting human culture through international exchange. Remember, the international relations help us in understanding the culture of other nations because there is a close interaction between the states. And when there is a close interaction, there is also people movement. And it, along with the people movement, you also have the culture knowledge that moves. So, through the study of IR, we know the culture of others and we respect them. We have better and safe traveling across the globe. We have better visa regulations, immigration policies and citizenship laws because the people are moving, they are moving to different states because they have relations. And with that relations, remember, we have new laws for the people to protect the people. This also encourages scholarly visits and exchange programs, promoting national culture through cultural exhibition program and culture fair. Again, all these are done by the study of international relations. You can see the different culture of different states and this are known because we have established relations with other states which are helpful to us. Dear students, with this we come to the end of the first unit. I hope you have enjoyed the two lectures and you have also understand the international relation as a subject. These are the references that were used. And now let's come to the summary of this chapter. We begin with using the word international and who used the word international for the first time? He was Jeremy Bantam, who was a British political philosopher. And he used this word in the year 1789. And in the same year, we also have French Revolution and the first U.S. Constitution being enforced and the first U.S. President, George Washington, taking the oath. Then we discussed about the meaning of IR, which means it's the relation between states, it's the relation between nations. And in that relations, we have two views about international relations. One was the narrow view, the second was the broader view. The narrow view was concerned with the political activities and with the official relations. And the broad view was concerned with many aspects of our human domain. It includes international organization, it includes people movement, it includes different types of associations, it includes economic associations, it includes trade relations, it includes religious relations, and so many. So this was the broad view of international relations, which is also uh, being applied in the present world. Then we discussed the scope of IR. And in the scope of IR, we discussed that IR started with a smaller scope, with a very limited scope, because it was limited, limited to diplomatic activities in the start. Iske baad, the study of international law was included. And then, as the international organizations, like League of Nations, like UN, the, st the scope of IR also get widened. Then, after World War II, the different events and the phenomena and the changes also increased and widened the scope of IR. In these events, we saw the decline of European powers because they fought the World War II and therefore they were not strong enough to control their colonies. So, kya hua? The colonies also start getting independence. So, the world map saw many countries getting independence. Dunya ke nakshon pe kafi mumalik aate gaye. Isi ke saath, the countries also involved in an arms race. Arms race 
race for arms, the race for weapons, again increased the scope of the IR. Then there was bipolar world in which the world was divided into two poles. One was the Eastern Bloc, the second was the Western Bloc and these two blocks were in a, in a state of conflicts. They were in a state of tension and studying them and the events happening between them is increasing the scope of international relations. Then the nuclear proliferation, the, the growth of nuclear technology and the rise of representative governments, the rise of democracy and the concept of welfare state in which the people is demanding too much from the government and therefore to fulfill the needs of the people the state has to establish relations on all levels with other states again increasing the scope of IR. So these were the events and changes that increase the scope of IR and then we discussed about the importance of IR and the importance of IR were that it helps us in understanding the present world. It helps us in understanding the success and failure of the policies of the, of the governments on the international level. It helps us in understanding the problems confronting the world and the problems that are on the international level again require international cooperation. So through the study of IR we come to know and we come to understand what are the problems of the today's world and how those problems should be solved. Therefore, the study of IR helps us in establishing cooperation, helps us in, in mutual understanding of the realization of the solution of the problem, how to solve those problems. So the state come together and they try to solve the problem through mutual strategy and mutual cooperation. Iske saath, the study of IR help us in encouraging peaceful relations. Aman kaise lana hai, aman ke talukat kaise honge, the study of IR help us in having those positive and peaceful relations. And study of IR also help us in establishing good economic relations between state. It improves the trade policies. It has encouraged economic policies. It has encouraged the international trade and the international agreements on different types of trade and has promoted export and import and that's a very good achievement of IR. And lastly, international relations help us in understanding human culture and human civilization and the respect for other culture and civilization and again to maintain our identity and not to merge it with the international identity by striving for a universal brotherhood. At the end, I would like you to know about a few questions and I hope that you will inshallah get the answer in my lecture as well as in my presentation. The review question on this unit, international relation, definition, meaning and scope are Number one, who used the word international for the first time and how many schools of thought exist on IR definition. Second, distinguish between narrow and broad view about IR. Next, trace the growth of the scope of IR with the passage of time. And what is the significance or the importance of studying IR? With this, we come to the end of this unit. Our next lecture would be on nation-state system. We, up till that, I wish you best of luck mm -hmm. and see you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.